All right, so yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm a chill, low-key guy that played for LBJ in season yeah. four. Yeah, yeah, four. We got second place. I think I'm a pretty dope guy, and yeah, on to the next person. I'm Malt. I'm pretty good at this game. That's all. I played on LBJ. Hello, I'm Lemonhead, number one general manager in IGL. Yeah, I'm not on this list. I don't really know why I'm here, but I'm here. I'm a KSP. I carried OBJ in season four. Okay. <laughs> well, hey guys, I'm Kairos, and I didn't play at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's, that's let's, awesome. Let, let's let's go right into the list. So yeah. starting with number twenty, yeah. seeing a returning a returning player, Nine Ticks, one of the best new gens last season. He last was. season, I'm pretty sure he was eight or nine. I know he was top ten, but uh, this season he definitely fell off because of his inactivity. After season three, he quit for a couple months, but he came back. He's still a good player, and he would be good if he applied himself and played. He showed yeah. up to matches. He played well, all things considered. Yeah, still has potential crazy. to be good. Nothing crazy this season. Still just an all-around good player. Yeah, so Ninetics like barely squeezed into there between 20th and 19th. Our 19th is Booming Bionic. Great pub player that finally decided to commit a season into comp. He had more hype but uh, he didn't really perform out of it, but he was still a very, very solid player that played for mom jeans though. But uh, yeah, solid player overall. Super yeah. aggro and pretty good, pretty good mechanics. Next up on our list, coming in at number 18 was Keanu. Keanu also played for mom jeans along with Booming Bionic. What are you guys' thoughts on him? He's a, re he's a really good, just hard W key player. He's really good on Elevation and Metro. Once again, Nothing like too special, but did well in matches against top teams. To be clear, this list was made off of SCL performance and not PFMM, but he did very well in PFMM when he played. But once again, not very active. Seems to be a recurring thing. Solid player overall. If there was like something to be noted about all the Mom Jeans players, is if they weren't so dedicated to throwing this season, I think that they <laughs> all could have been so much better. But that, that's their decision at the end of the day. Keanu and Booming still, you know, get a spot in the top 20 because they're, they're very good at the game. I think Keanu started playing season three, but like Joey, who was also on Mom Jeans, when he played, he was a really good player and he was a top player for Mom Jeans. Mom Jeans easily could have been a really good team if they just put the time in. On to the next person on the list. It's the one that was just speaking. Kyra, <laughs> want to speak about yourself? Yeah, I should be top two and I should be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, here, I'll take this one for Kairos. He just didn't really want to play all too much. He lost a lot of motivation for the game. From last season, on the top 20, he was like 10th, but, you know, he dropped down a couple slots. And this is just because he started playing other games like Valorant. He's really, really good at that game now. Even when it came down to it in matches and stuff, he still played really, really good. And considering that he's washed, he's still really, really good at the game. If he were to unwash, he could easily, like, claim a spot again. Kairos, were you expecting yourself to be in the top 20? Um, no. <laughs> I, I, I thought I played absolutely awful this season. When I did well, I, I think it's well deserving because a lot of players quit. So, there, to be honest, there's not a lot of competition. Yeah. For top yeah. Three. yeah. Plus, you were still starting roster most of the time for OBJ, which was the second place team this season. That's why Kairos is placed there. Next on the list, we have Joey. Jobby. Other, other known as world best player Jobby. <laughs> he's not, he's definitely not number one, but, um, like we previously stated before, a top player in previous seasons was a new gen, came into the game, got joined PR, and then got traded to ID, a mid-season <laughs> trade, yeah. and, uh, and won the season there. But yeah, he's a great player that decided to not dedicate to, at all to playing this season. He would only play in matches. He also had a trip to Greece where he played on trackpad. <laughs> oh yeah! Seven and forty occasionally, <laughs> but you know, he's still a top player when he does have that mouse on him. And yeah, that's why he's uh, deserving of that spot. Best player yeah. on mom jeans, but um just hella inactive, just like the rest of them. Yeah. Coming from uh from the last match that Mom Jeans ever played back in the uh was it it wasn't the semifinals, it was the quarterfinals, I believe. He had one of the best performances he had had, like all season he ended up fragging out completely and i feel like if he could have applied himself that entire season it would have been a completely different game if he were to unwash and be back to like how he was in the in like season two and like the start of season three when he actually like tried and put effort into the game he could be so much higher because he's so good at the game that also goes for the next person on the list bobberson <laughs> bobberson one two one one let's give some backstory because he's a new player on the list and a lot of people probably don't know much about him he started playing in season two he used to be a clipper on Phantom Forces, trick shotting. He came into comp. He was not great. Got a new computer, started grinding PFMM, became probably arguably the top player for 
couple weeks at least he was dropping 80s 70s and then uh yeah he just started trolling every game but when it came down to scl he actually played really well this season a couple months ago maybe even a month ago we had a match against mint where he second fragged against them without ever playing much this season once again i mean if he applies himself he could be top 10 easily and even higher potentially really good talented player just uh yeah trolls a little bit too much Next player on our list, I would like to start this off. Should be number one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> not number one. He is number one Canada, as for now. It's the man himself. Roblox Aim Knight. Anybody have words for him? He is the number one warehouse player. According to yeah. himself. Yeah, can't say I agree with many of his takes on the game, but, I mean, you can't deny he's not a good player. He, I mean, he does well in matches, does well in PFMM. He's been consistent since Azon, season two. Really reason, good player, remained good. Yeah. That's the reason that Space Monkey's got a third with him, Nathan, and the uh, Sten. He just he was that third option on that team, but he never well, actually, you're, for you're forgetting someone, but yeah, that's, I'll we'll, we'll get to it. that person later. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll allow it for now. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants uh, to take Miguel? I'll take Miguel. Why not? This will be fun. Actually, KSP, you want to say something about Miguel Killer Br? Um, no. <laughs> I don't. Did he, even, did he even play? He played like he one played. match. He played like okay. finals. So yeah. Miguel, yeah, he only really played one match this season, and so it makes you think, how is he like decently ranked on this list at all? But it's because despite not playing like a single PFMM for practice and not really scrimming all too much with his team, he came into finals against LBJ and he, he pulled his weight well enough. He was positive. It wasn't like he was like getting absolutely destroyed. And he was one of the top players from last season. Um, he's insanely like good mechanically, extremely aggressive player. He, you know, he just wins gunfights. You're just like, how the hell did he do that? And so, I think that I think this position's a decently fair spot for Miguel this season because he still did good. He's still one of the best yep. players. Do you think if he played more during SCL, like the entire time we have played season four, he would be ranked higher? Absolutely, easily be yeah. top five. Easily. That goes for basically everyone beneath him on this list, and a couple mm -hmm. people ahead of him as well. I mean, anyone mm -hmm. can get better just by playing. That's all it really takes. Definitely yeah, because like when when he did play a lot, he was he was really solid, and he was like one of the main factors in FBR, like even having like a place in SEO. And on season three, he was a, a, such a good player for Drastic. Okay. Next, we got uh, Polar. In my in my eyes, probably well, he's the second or third best player on Space Monkeys, and not to mention the fact that he's also a new gen. This is his first season. And he gets like third. Rookie of the year award. So, rookie of the year award. Yeah, yeah. I, I say, yeah, we definitely give him goes that. to Polar. Um, yeah, very good player. And he's he's still improving. Like, he's he's just getting better and better as time goes on. Very active player. Very good player. Just, um, I don't know. He understood the game quickly, caught on, and he, uh, yeah, applied himself in matches. He's the reason, yep. uh -huh. largely the reason Space Monkey got third, in my opinion. Played well against us. Actually, <laughs> One thing that needs to be mentioned is that Space Monkeys and Mint didn't play against each other this whole season. Really? So, yeah. It's kind of a matchup I wish we could have seen, but yeah, they didn't they didn't get a chance to play against each other. But yeah, really mm -hmm. good player. Interesting. Yeah, and if we do this uh, list next season, I could definitely see him moving up a few spots if he decides to stay as committed as he is right now. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, he's been frying in a PFMM recently. Whenever he played, he, he popped off. He is on the come up to say the least. And yeah, like indeed. this other player right above him, mm. Snacks is great player for LBJ and improved over the season. At Most first, improved he was just, player. Yes, definitely he was considered the last option coming into the very beginning of the season for our team. And then as the season went on, he definitely became a part of that starting five roster and had huge impact on maps such as Suburbia. And even top fragged in finals on Suburbia. Uh, for uh, LBJ and um, yeah, just great player overall and player of the shit ton. He's like an also like extremely humble and just chill guy all around. He's a he's a great teammate to have. He's so he he never gets mad. He's always chill. He always he tells us to calm down when we get mad. He just plays to win. He doesn't do anything like stupid and flashy. He's there for the win, and you know that can't be understated. He's he's an incredible player. Do you yep. think having a mental is more important than having yes. skill? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. We yes. can look back on season three of SCO and we can look at Kairos when his <laughs> mental was like it was In pretty the bad. In the his toilet. mental was pretty bad and he fell off, but recently he's been playing PFMM a lot more and he's like completely chilled out now, doesn't care. 
and he's playing a lot better. So I think mental definitely does have a big impact on how you play. Just being in the right headspace, like not getting upset. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just Roblox, bro. We're not getting paid to play. Just play to the best of your ability. If you don't win, it's whatever. Go next. That's just all it is. I think Snacks is just probably one of the most like underrated players on this list because I feel like no one like when you think of like top players you don't like really like see like Snaxis but like when he's in a game he actually like performs really well compared to yeah. like other like, others. Alright, next on the next list is a... Winky. Who yeah. we didn't see a whole lot this season, did we? No, no but I, I think like three matches. Three. But when he did play, he uh he saved us. He saved us on Death <laughs> PM. <laughs> There was a match against Space Monkeys. It was like it was. I think it was our elimination match. If we if we lost that, then we were out. Yeah. And yeah, he came up big on Desert TDM along with Pulse and dropped the two KD. I don't know why Desert TDM was played, but I mean he showed up. He is like I'd say probably the best pub player at the moment in terms of like smoothness. His gameplay is insanely smooth. His aim is so good. He's just movement I don't know. Through the roof. Insane. Yeah, movement, movement is so good. I really understands the game. Doesn't even need to play comp to be good. Good fundamental really? player. He's also improved a lot from last season. Because last season he played like maybe like two matches and he wasn't really like the highest like impact player. He wasn't like, yeah. really, like a crazy good player. But like this season he, he he's definitely improved quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It makes you wonder if he were to like put time into PFMM just how good he could really be. Because on a lot of the maps, if it's not a map that he's played, like for example, like New Suburbia, Suburbia C, he doesn't understand how the map really flows and that's why he doesn't like to play it. But on all the other maps, he's extremely good at it because he understands how the map goes. It's because he pl he's played the map before. And coming in from Winky right above him is actually one of the biggest jump gaps we have from 95 points to 126. Next up is Nathan. What are you guys' thoughts on him? I mean, not much can be said. He's been good the entirety of SCL. He was on ER, THG, and then he was on Space Monkeys. Was, I mean, was he, on, um, he was on Chaos Season 1. Before, before Space Monkeys, wasn't he? I, yeah, he actually was on mint at uh at the beginning of the season, but yeah, he went to go play on space monkeys with Sin. Yeah, really good player. Another one of those players that doesn't need to play to be good. I haven't seen him play PFMM in God knows how long. He still sustained his skill. Like I remember our first uh, LBJ's first game against Mint when he yeah. played. He, he dropped like 60 something. He dropped something. It was it was 68. Kills. It was yeah, it was, 68 it was 68 kills against us on Suburbia, which was our best. And he map. was like. He was the only one doing good on that, uh, on his team, on that map. Just coming back and not like playing PFM at all or anything. Like, coming back dropping 68 on LBJ's best map is, I mean, that's a really solid performance. Moving on, we're gonna go to the man himself, Daniel, <laughs> other known as Kamaru Dean Uzman, or um, Gary uh, Hernandez, Boggs Cutters, Squidward. Yeah, whatever he wants to be called. Luka Trancic, <laughs> yeah. changes his name to you next week. <laughs> So I personally Man. don't know a whole lot about Daniel, so you guys will have to fill me in. I could probably say the most about him because every time we play a match, I'm calming for him. So like, I'm watching him play. If you just look at it, it's hard to tell what makes him good, but he just has a good understanding of what needs to be done. Like, he doesn't talk, so he doesn't calm, so I usually calm for him. But, I mean, even without having comms, he just knows what to do, knows where to be, knows what to push. And, I mean, his aim is also really good. And even though his activity dropped down significantly this season, all things considered, um, still are, I mean, I'd say he's probably top three or four on, on, on LBJ. I just say that he's just probably the most consistent out of any of our players. It's not, despite not playing at like weeks at a time, he would always come in, go 55 and 30, and just always be second, third. I mean, four prag sometimes, but just easily the most consistent player on our uh, list. Next, Next on the list is KSP. Have... Go ahead, KSP. Speak for yourself, uh -oh. you haven't said anything. Take it away. Oh, sorry, I'm playing PFMM right now. Uh, <laughs> I played season three, got second. I played this season, I got second. I kind of yeah, fell okay, off. Okay, I got this, I got this. You got a great role on her. <laughs> Probably okay. it's just like with everybody, like tied for either third or second. You know me being first, of course. But um, obviously, just a great player overall. Always has been consistent. It was a great pickup for OBJ. As um, even though LBJ is just mostly drain gang from season three, moved on to season four, we picked him up, picked him up, ended up getting second. Great player overall. When we needed him, he always fragged out, and um, yeah, just a high level player, and that's why he's 
die high on the list. Yep, I had a very great speech about me carrying LBJ, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. next up on our list is Sin. He also played for Space Monkeys, correct? Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah. And let's see. It he was um he was still very good, but not nearly as good as he was last season. I mean, season three, last season I would say he was like the clear cut MVP. I mean, he carried THG to second against DG. Had some really standout moments in season three. This season, he was just, he took a more laid back role. He didn't really try. But... GM in the league, just assembled the new gens and ended up bringing them to. Yeah, did the same thing he did last season. Yeah, made a team full of relative new players, brought them up and performed really well with them. So All right, now we're getting into the uh, the top five. So top this five. is this is when you really learn about the difference between some of the really high ranked players and still players who are still insanely good, but definitely have improvement. So at number five we have a carbon who did play for mint but i honestly didn't see him a whole lot he played okay. jukes jukes tower of hell it's a little hiatus <laughs> to um not play pfs consistently but i would say towards the beginning of the season he was still relatively active and back towards finals and everything he showed up and played well against us i don't know what can be said about him other than the fact that he's just insanely good at the game i mean he's been good ever since his start in season two on azon um, I mean, he's improved consistently ever since then, been on top teams, played well against other top teams, even without playing the game at all, nearly. I mean, we rarely ever saw him in PFMM or SCL. It could be a way better, probably just top three if he wanted to. But yeah, uh, definitely. I think uh, Jig Tower's hell has, um, I think he has his priority straight <laughs> and he, uh, he, wanted to get, he wants to get those tower moves done basically, so yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. respect to the grind though. Respect uh -huh. to the grind. Next up on the list, we have um, the man himself in the VC. It is Jug Messiah. Jug Messiah. <laughs> or other known as Malt. Yeah. Malt, tell us a little so, bit about yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Take it away, bro. At the start of the season, I decided, like, it was summer. I decided, all right, I want to be good at this game. So I started playing a crap ton of PFMM, and I started uh -huh. to, like, I started to actually see a lot of improvement because. Instead of getting mad at PFMM matches, I just treat it as like a learning opportunity. And, like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Every single game, why do I suck so much? And then eventually after enough playing, my aim got better and I started dropping an absurd amount of games that were like super high kills. I choked 100 in PFMM. I did not. <laughs> Someone yeah. else can talk for me. Or someone else can <laughs> so explain me. I actually watched the, the video we made last season and I looked at the comments and Malt left the comment and said, I will be top 10 next season. And now he's number four. Last season, I'm pretty sure he was like number 13. Wasn't as active. This season, he actually, you know, applied himself, started grinding the game. I mean, you know, it paid off. He was our number two or number three option behind Pulse or KSB. It's interchangeable. Very fundamentally good player. Improved a lot over a short span of time just by playing the game actively. Now we're into the top three. And I'm pretty sure pretty much anyone who is even somewhat in SEL could have definitely picked out these top three players. So at number three, we do have Ruby herself, who was on many alt accounts this season. I don't think she played on her main account at all. Nah, she played on uh, her alt. Was uh, was number one last season. Dropped off barely by two positions just because she did not commit as much time. At the very beginning of the season, where she did grind a lot, she was no arguing number one. She would just, oh yeah. She, she would be in front of you, and next thing you know, your your whole team's dead. It was like an anime yeah. fight, basically. It was just, it was just over. But yep. um, she just st stopped playing, uh, became more inconsistent. Still, like, probably the second or number one option. Well, not number one, but usually the second option on mints. And had a great role in finals. And, I mean, even dropped, like, 79 at the beginning of, of the season on our heads. On yeah, LBJ's number two heads, team. On our best match. Yeah. So, early on the season, definitely number one. But uh, as the season went on. Slowly just didn't play up to that caliber, but still, still a great, great, great player. Then we have Pulse at number two, who, <laughs> up in up before finals, was widely considered the best player. But we will get to why Build overtook yeah. him. But as for the Pulse, I mean, up. Pulse has been top three, top five for let's see how many seasons have you played now? Four or five? I don't know how many seasons we're in. Three seasons you've been a top player now. Even without movement, even without broken guns, 1,200 matches in PFMM, 
multiple 100s dropped across the board. I mean, nobody's really doing it like him. I it's truly... a build. Okay, bro. But truly, <laughs> I, have the, I have the scoring title. I am. I would have been the MVP if we're yes. talking about regular season. I did get banned for two months, which no one mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't be on this list if, list if I was. I stayed banned, but uh, I came back, still fragged on a dong, and um, I'm just not number one because I didn't show up in finals. I was a shell of myself. That takes us to number one. That, uh, uh, two 70s in finals, a 50 in TDM, with almost a 2KD on across all three maps. I mean, we got dogged in finals by build. Build. Not build. Build yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, crazy. Yeah, it was, he's just unironically the most consistent player I've ever seen. Like, he, he's, yeah. he's just put so much time into this game, and he has like, what, like 12,000 matches in PFM or something? 1,200, 1,200, 1,200, 1,200, at 1200. least like 1,500 at this point, probably, 50, yeah. probably closer to 1,500 and now. Yeah, he's just, he's just played so much that, like, he's fundamentally so good with the game, he just knows where to play, like, he, he, he doesn't. He doesn't have like a super aggressive or like crazy play style, but he just knows like what to do in the correct situations and where to position himself so that he can take advantage of every single gunfight. Those nades, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. ridiculous nades. All uh, the way. Best nader on this list by far since Zuda was not on here. Um, <laughs> just great player overall, has been great for the past 84 seasons. Um, Nothing's really stopping him. He has a hard place out of stop. He just plops the nade on your head and then pushes up. And usually wins that gunfight. Just great positioning, great nading overall. You just can't really stop him. And he proved that in finals that he is a man that you cannot stop. And uh, yeah, that's why he dropped 70 after 70. And then continues to carry his team all the way up to the third uh, and final map where he did go 15 2 KD as a head. TDM map. Yeah, so yeah. There, was, there was no stopping him that game. Just it was well it was deserved hard. overall. He uh he just showed up when he needed to, and that's why he's number one. Yeah. He... That's completely valid. So you guys mentioned something about some honorable mentions that didn't really 100% deserve <laughs> to be on the list, but should be mentioned in the first place. Yeah, I'll okay. I'll say, I mean, some people probably don't agree with this, but I think Oxygen on Nitrogen. I mean, like he had a stretch where he was dropping 70s in PFMM. I mean, he never really did anything too special in SCL, but he's a very good PFMM player. Also a new gen, I think, came up out of nowhere. Maybe I'm not allowed to mention this guy, but Watto. I mean, he was really good, but he's banned now. He deserves to be mentioned here. He was very good on Space Monkeys, probably their fourth or fifth option on that team. But uh, now he's banned. Rest in peace, but very good player. I think Amy or Wait is, is definitely another mention like, that mention. should be mentioned, because like, it was her first no second game against men it was to decide who was going into losers bracket last like three <laughs> seconds of the game she gets a double kill and secures the four points or something yeah something. we lost we lost by we one lost point by on one flare dom we, we lost, lost by, by one, one point, point because yeah. she got a double kill in the last like two seconds of the game <laughs> and she's not in the top 20 i would just say this because she's not on par with her other teammates but always had that like just, yeah, she was just a solid player. Same thing yeah, with Raw. Just... Just like, yeah. Been, they've both just been like kind of like average players that like have always like been just, good enough to yeah, perform. Yeah, been good enough to level. play, but like not good enough to like, stand crazy. out. I think that's pretty much it. Um, this this is just the list that uh, some of the top players have made. Um, the people are always going to have different lists, but you guys are like the council of some of the highest tier players possible except for lemonhead who didn't make the list hey, no, he, is, no, he is very high tier i'm number zero you just don't see oh him. yeah 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 <laughs> too busy being a gm if he stepped on the court who knows no nobody's stopping him well i appreciate you guys coming out doing this yeah, pretty thank interesting you. thank you